Anytime Kelly ran a fever or was acting sick, she was immediately hospitalized and put in an isolation room. You can't leave a two-year-old in an isolation room for weeks on end. So when Kelly was hospitalized, I was hospitalized. I would stay with her at the hospital, live there at the hospital. And thank God I had my mom, who was such a great support. She didn't work, she was a homemaker. And she took care of Chrissy. And I could rest assured that Chrissy was being loved and, and cared for, and my husband would go to work. You know, we had this printing and packaging company, and he had a partner. So his time, he didn't have to worry about losing a job because, you know, he was the boss. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how we lived. And it was during that time that I recognized when you're in a children's hospital, it could be any children's hospital in the United States, it really is a community within itself. It's your, it becomes your neighborhood. And you begin to hear these stories of your neighbors who become your friends. And some of these parents you would see repeatedly because they had children with all kinds of, of rare disorders and serious illnesses or disabilities. So they were back and forth to the hospital as much as you were. And you get drawn into their family, and, and they get drawn into your family. And it's, it's like the greatest equalizer of race and culture, socioeconomic background, because it really doesn't matter where you went to school, what kind of a house you live in, you know, what kind of a car you drive, what neighborhood you're from. You know, that's where you really see how much we're all the same. And you, you begin to love these people. And, and then you hear their stories, and that's when we really began to see what was happening out there and finding out that so many parents were ending up losing their jobs because they were good parents.